is a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network. finale of super trucks heads to the holy grail of super cars monaco on a mountain mount panorama circuit and qualifying underway here at this glorious track three drivers all with a shot at taking the title away here on the iRacing esports network brought to you by racebot tv but before we go any further let's just take ourselves to this journey to this fable track last time out was a key component in that factor keep an eye out then as we recap round 11 of the championship they approach the cake in the flag stand green flags out we're underway for mid ohio back on the way further behind as well with uh, eric blackston comes up between the two of them Oh, absolute nightmare! What will Blix do as he'll have the preferred line for Manus? He backs up for the breaking entry, goes for the crossover on James King. Can't make anything work quite yet, but Sven bumps him up the racetrack. Bobby Zelensky still trying to get by Mulgren as he walks it up. Zelensky goes sideways. Zelensky makes the drifting pass through the keyhole. Look at them, absolutely can't get much closer than that. And Zelensky, I think, is going to hold that inside the line, but Mulgren's still there. These two are slowing each other up here. Zelensky has taken the lead after very close quarters. So everybody's coming in. Look at that. Zelensky out and away. Sven Kimmons hasn't even made it to the final corner, but crucially, Michael Mulgren side by side with him now. A heck of a stop right there. Look at that side by side as Zelensky goes drifting his way through the keyhole. Zelensky looking to the outside again. Great drive through these two, and I think Zelensky might get this one done this time. Hold on, Mulgren. He sends it in deep. They go into Madness. Zelensky's on the preferred line for Madness as Mulgren pushes up the track. He was battling up at the front with Marco Mulgren, able to get the lead in intense battles able to get the lead after having some a decent pit strategy and today he'll come away with another victory on the season bobby zelensky wins at mid ohio Bathurst 
New South Wales. 6.21 kilometers, 23 turns, and a track which scares a lot of drivers in any vehicle. You try and challenge it, it splits the men from the boys. You head yourself up the mountain straight, the likes of the cutting, the likes of Solomon and McPhillamy Park before you chase yourself through Brock Skyline, down the mountain to the Forest Elbow, and then to the fastest corner in Australia motorsports, the chase here on the IRC Esports Network. V8 Super Trucks are here for their season finale. I'm Jake Sperry, joined with Connery Maddock. It's the Jake and Connery Show on the IRC Esports Network. Make sure you subscribe right now. Connery, what an interesting championship we have. Three drivers still with a shot of winning this. And what's really interesting is their teammates, or two of them are at least. Marco Mogren and Sven Kamets have been working incredibly hard. And you've also got Bobby Zelensky leading the championship. 42 points to the margin. Yep, exactly. So all the advantages right now in this championship are going Bobby Zelensky's way, but it is not done by any means. Any mistake, that means Zelensky drops to the rear end of this field. And if Marco Mogren wins, then, wow, that is going to be a huge chance that Mogren just has to take because Zelensky, he can't finish. He has to finish higher than 12th to try to secure this championship. And let's not forget, Sven Kametz is still in this one, but he needs divine intervention at this stage to make the championship his. When it comes to the team's championship, that's all but wrapped up at this stage. Radicals Online have been fantastic with their overall efforts, which has translated to this V8 Super Truck Series. They have themselves the advantage over Slip Angle Motorsports. Lempel's currently in third, but some little scraps going down there. Lempel's versus Off Camber, for example. We've also got Team Mad trying to get on the action. They'll be chasing down Makiba Kinetic for sixth and seventh position in this one. In the road versus oval category, road holds a very surmountable advantage here. 90 odd points they are looking at at the moment and are probably safe in the road versus oval championship. And manufacturers wise though, Connery, it's still very close between Toyota and Chevrolet. Still all to play for between those two manufacturers. So that one's going to be decided at this event as well. I'm very interested to see who comes out on top in terms of that particular fight. But we've got qualifying going on right now, Jake. And guess who's leading the way? It is the one, the only championship leader, Bobby Zelensky. And the reigning champion to boot as well. Marco Mogren, though, the 257 heads through Murray's corner. Final chance potentially for him. Big slides. He tries to apply the power down and crosses the line for a 204.5816 thousands says that he is the quicker driver and that is brilliant he does have time to set his second lap they have two and a half minutes to go two minutes up and down the mountains Van Kamets has butchered the left hand corner at the forest elbow he may have a lot of work to do in this event if he's going to get anything to work we're going to see what his times are going to be as he now makes his way to the fastest corner in Australia motorsports Connery yeah, exactly. Calming down the hill bend down towards the chase. This very, very, very fast right hand kink down into there. Gets on the brakes then for the cutting. Will uh, Kamets, he hits his way all the way through here. Still hasn't set a qualifying time just yet. This will be his first time lap and he actually won't get uh, any time to get a another lap in on fresher tires so this is could be the one and done for Sven Kamitz he gets a huge slide coming out the final corner what's the time gonna end up being good enough for P number four and he won't get another lap in he slowed it right down James King coming across the line then and he will stay in P number six for now yes he will I was just keeping an eye on Bobby Zelensky as well he will not be able to set another flying tie because he has abandoned the lap but someone who can put a spanner in the works is clamp nation logan clamp right now heading through the chase in that inex racing truck and now for clamp who has had a pretty good season by his standards not in the championship fight but always going to be there looks like maybe a little bit of damage potentially to that silverado on the front as he crosses the line does a 2041 and blitzes the field by four tenths of a second that was not what marco mogren wanted to see everybody is pretty much done in qualifying the grid is as follows Logan Clampett, number 44 on the pole, four tenths of a second ahead of Marco Mogren, who needs a victory and nothing else. Bobby Zelensky starts this one from third, the championship leader, with Aaron Smith, the second, starting this one on the second row. 
Ben Canis will go from fifth with Wade Hayes in sixth. James King starts seventh with Race Spot TV's very own Paul Smith. He's doing a charity live stream right now of all the racing action for 24 hours. Make sure that you donate to the cause. He's in eighth. Martin Capel's the last driver to set a time in ninth. And drives who didn't set times. Danny Solo, Eric Blix couldn't set a lap time due to a penalty. Justin Kruitoff, Clifton Crockerell, and also Daniel Thompson rounds out this 14 car field as we begin the gridding process for the 17 lap event a rolling start as well is going to be very very crucial but connery logan clampett is the unwanted help that bobby zelensky desperately needs if marco mokran can't win this then zelensky will have to crash yeah, he will, and that is a, a, a huge concern for Mogren right now. He needs a fantastic start here just to squeak himself ahead of Logan Clampett. But if Clampett is be putting in qualifying times like that, four tenths of a second than his closest competitor, then that is going to be a massive struggle for Mogren to get himself ahead and put, put a couple of cars between himself and Bobby. No fast repair. If you crash, that is it. It is day and done. It looked like well, spec drivers like Eric Blix to try and charge up through the field. Starting from 10th, he's fourth in the championship. You've got drivers out there like Sven Kamets, who has nothing to lose in this situation. If he can't take the championship, well, he'll certainly look to try and chase down Zelensky and make his life a little bit of a nuisance. But for the time being, at least, Connery, pick a champion. Oh, I think all the advantages, like I said at the top of the broadcast, are with uh, Zelensky right now. But you never know what can happen in these uh, V8 Super Trucks races. You can't, you know, can't you can't guess what happens just at Mount Panorama in general. It's just a, such a tricky track. It's such a specialist track as well. You step a foot out of line, and that is pretty much your race done and dusted, and not in the way Zelensky might want. But oh, this is going to be an absolutely fantastic event. We've got 17 laps to look forward to here. At Mount Panorama. And one mandatory pit stop. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, that the Hard Charger Award is in full effect. A driver who makes the most positions outside of the top three, well, they will be pretty much looking to get a very, very nice prize out of it. Make sure you check to see if your favorite is making moves up through the field. Just one vehicle we are waiting on at the moment, and that should be Eric Blix, who I think does have to start this one from pit road so there'll be a nice little gap then as the iRacing roof first safety car decides to head its way towards the chase chicane pace led behind logan clamp it's a difficult one behind this pace car of course it's a very uh difficult pit entry as well which a lot of drivers often find themselves getting caught up on especially at australian tracks the three that you have on the iRacing service all incredibly difficult in their own ways but Let's bring the curtains up for the final time. Pace car will dive left onto pit road as they wait for Murray's corner. Pace behind Clamp Nation in the number 44, rounding the final corner with Marco Mogren desperate to get on in tow. And green flag goes, and they get themselves underway. And Mogren a little bit slow then, has to cover Zelensky. Zelensky instantly down to the inside, which is not what Marco Mogren wants into Hell's Corner. Turn number one, tries to run around the outside and gets a little wiggle on the exit, and he just about has enough power. It's slow in fifth position there for Sven Kamets, who has to drop back. And I think that was actually Aaron Smith second dropping positions then as Wade Hayes battles it out with James King. But Marco Mogren still refusing to give up, even though the toe is full. Zelensky diving at turn number two, trying to make the position. Oh. Big slide on the curb and drops a position. And maybe Kamet's trying to think about making the move. No, Mogren's more important. Yeah, definitely is. It was a drag race all the way down uh, towards the uh, towards the start of the climb up the mountain. Aaron Smith and James King then battling it out further down the field. That's a lot of positions lost on the start there for Aaron Smith. He's lost two positions, not the start, but he would have wanted that. Hall. He gets a little bit squirrely as he gets himself up towards the top of the mountain for the first time. And I've just seen someone right at the back just drop back a little bit. That was Danny Solo having a couple of issues as they head through McFillan Park for the first time. In the wall coming through Griffin's mouth. That was not ideal at all as they head down the mountain for the very first time. You're leading three. Currently stand as Clampett, Zelensky and Marco Mogren. And the Radicals cars have to chase down Bobby Zelensky. Have to get past. 
if they want anything to do with this race. And they may just have to be hoping at this stage that Zelensky finds himself in one of these fabled walls inside of the opening 25% of this race. If he does that, he will score a big fat nothing in terms of his points. But I'm sure he'll be looking to try and get repairs to make that work. Zelensky at this stage, Connor, he does not have to make moves. You have a big ooh. No, I just saw Zelensky just take a huge amount of curve there coming through the kink just before the chase. And wow, that was uh, can be a scary moment because his car did seem to be a little bit unsettled as a result of that one. And that would have been a high speed accident if he wasn't able to hold it. But he'll stay P number two for now. And that's just all he needs to do. He doesn't need to fight Logan Clamper in this situation because if he finishes where he is, he's he's the champion and by a quite a comfortable margin as well so it's up to Marco Morgan to try and get right onto the back of him and harass him into a mistake but he's already lost 1.6 seconds on the opening lap so Marco Mogren of all things now needs to find himself some lightning pace that same lightning pace that we saw from him in practice and in those practice times the top three were split by just 23 thousandths of a second being Clampit, Mogren and Sven Kamet so there is a lot of work but they are starting to drag a little bit of a train behind them as Mogren and Kamet James King Aaron Smith the second Wade Hayes and Martin Kapal are all there as there's a car in the wall that's Paul Smith who is in the wall engine smoking all on his own oh. trying to put the power down out to the back stepped out and head first into the wall that is pretty much day done for the Yorkshireman Paul Smith Eric looks it also hits the wall ahead of him as we cut towards the replay what exactly has happened to very spot TV zone Paul Smith coming through the right hander oh the just car just broke away What's very late on exit Zelensky's in the wall, coming out through oh. Skyline, and that was all on his own. He Back clips the end. curb, and he just goes around, noses into the wall, keeps the position, but all of a sudden, how much damage does Bobby Zelensky have? Marco Mogren's there, and going straight by. Oh, that's a, such a heavy impact into the wall. We'll see the pass uh, being done here. Look at the straight line speed. Zelensky absolutely has none of it. He'll be cycled pretty much all the way to the back of this field. And now the championship swings in favor of Mogwin. It does as there goes through the team Bushfink racing car. Zelensky looking at the brakes. Aaron Smith the second just behind as well. I'm just trying to get a look and see how badly it's damaged. There is both fenders exposed. This is terrible for Bobby Zelensky, but crucially, there is not enough damage to pull the car onto pit road. He will stay out. We do not know yes. if he's got enough damage that he has to come down in server stop. But look at how much he's struggling on the straights. Through goes one, through goes two. And that's going to be a very, very telling factor. As you can see, the Wakiva Kinetic truck making its way through with Wade Hayes. And straight away, Martin Kapal takes another position. And Zelensky's championship is now fading. Not enough damage yet, I have to mention yet, because we don't know what kind of engine or radiator damage that Bobby Zelensky has. If he runs at full pace now, uh, you know, for a couple of laps, he might find that his engine's going to start to overheat because of that damage, and his engine might explode, and that will put a seal on his championship hopes. And remember, he's got to get through 25% distance here, and that's four and a bit laps. In fact, it's five laps here, because you have to go over 25% distance so for Bobby Zelensky he's got to stay out another three laps here and get himself into pit road if he is to score points in this event and that's the telling factor he's got to score points because Marco Mogren he's getting no help here from Logan Clampett he's hoping that Zelensky has dropped down the order and has retired the car he hasn't now Clifton Cockrell will be approaching here this for 10th position yeah, exactly. Believe it or not, if Zelensky still finishes where he is, he will still be the championship winner. But uh, Cockrell right behind him, been running about a second a lap faster as a result of Zelensky's damage. And this pass will be a pretty easy one coming down the straight because of the complete lack of straight line speed that Zelensky has as they'll come through the Forest Elbow, through the Dipper as well. And we'll see this pass perhaps completed on the run down towards the kink. Look at the overspeed that Cockrell has here. He'll get this one disposed of very very easily Zelensky dropping down even further that was at least 15 kilometers an hour difference on that stretch as Danny Solo and Eric Blix will be the next vehicles trying to chase that down and 13th I don't think secures a championship if Marco Mogren wins but of course he's got to get to Logan Clampett 
in a little bit. But look at that gap. It's already extended out to five seconds here in this event. Battle now. Aaron Smith, the second, trying to get past James King. This at turn number one. This for fourth position. Not brave enough on the brakes into turn one. So Smith will have to play the waiting game at the moment, trying to do everything that he can. I was just looking at Bobby Zelensky's time. It seems that he doesn't have enough damage, but that was a 2.16 that he's got. This is survival now for Bobby Zelensky and a driver of a champion if he can get it home. Yeah, I've just worked it out. If Marco Mogren Mogr finishes second and Zelensky finishes second to last, looks like at this point, because we have had Paul Smith retire from this race, that would still mean that Mogren wins this championship if Zelensky finishes 13th. Well, that's going to be telling. And there's the rear gunner as well in Sven Kamet. So now Bobby Zelensky's got a decision to make. He's got to be crafty about how he drives it. Solo and Blix have both gone through. So Zelensky is now last. Paul Smith is currently one lap, well, a couple of laps down at this stage, just trying to drive himself around. So a lot going on. Aaron Smith has made his way through on James King. He did that at turn number two. And they were actually, no, he didn't. He got it out of turn number two as King ran a little bit wide in the Team Bush Street racing car. Look at the train behind them as they all try and file their way through down the mountain. You can see how they all took different lines there. Kapal really got the worst of it down that mountain. Has to be careful. A little bit of a revision to my calculation. Zelensky uh, actually needs to finish 11th and above in this sort of situation with Mogren running in P number two. That is going to be the situation. And please correct me if I've got my numbers wrong, but still Zelensky currently running in P number 11. Look how slow he's going out of the forest elbow. That's just a catastrophic uh, thing to see there for Zelensky. As I'm having a look at where he is, he is in P number 13 right now. So as it stands with uh, what's going to be, uh, as Logan Kambik costs the line, 13 laps to go, Marco Mogren is your champion. Yes, but he needs two retirements, does Bobby Zelensky, and that can happen so easily around this track if you're not paying attention. Bob Zelensky will tell you that firsthand. Remember, there's a pit stop as well that can come into play. Speeding on pit road is something that does become a factor around this track. So I'm looking at Justin Kruitov in the 46, battling Daniel Thompson in the 14. This one now for a very, very good eighth position out on track and the pair of them have both gained four positions in this event so they're capitalizing but of course any damage any contact and it could be disaster later on yeah exactly this race this entire championship just hangs in the balance uh, if you're bobby zelensky you gotta feel that you're relying on other people right now to make mistakes either your championship this championship contender of marco mogren or a couple of cars ahead so he can elevate himself in towards a championship winning position but the other point is is his car even going to survive until the end of the race yes and well he's got himself to lap five so he will be scoring points which is the key factor for Bobby Zelensky. The worst part is he won't be scoring very many if things remain as they do. Down the mountain, drivers come one more time. And the pit stop window normally opens around one third's distance here. As I just saw Aaron Smith, the second, run incredibly wide through the forest elbow. Very lucky to still have a vehicle. We're starting to see how these trucks are starting to just open out a little bit. Wade Hayes struggling to stay with James King. Yeah, very much struggling to stay with him. He's just getting outside of the draft at this moment in time, even though Wade Hayes was quite a bit quicker on that last lap. So he's trying to work on getting back into a position where he's able to challenge the team at Bushfink Racing Driver in the middle of this race. But uh, right now, I'm just trying to work the calculator a little bit because I don't even think Zelensky is, is secure. Even if he finishes P number 11, I believe it'll be a one point difference in that situation. So it's going to be bonus points that decides it if, if Zelensky finishes 11. Well, at the moment, no driver has bonus points because Logan Clampett is stealing them all at this stage. He is the fastest man on track by a good six tenths of a second on that last lap. So don't worry about bonus points. Clamp Nation is taking all of them as he holds a six and a half second lead at the front of this field. Good little battles that are going on out on track. We've still got Daniel Thompson under pressure here with Justin Krutov 
and they've got Martin Kapal just in the distance, 1.7 seconds, so definitely noticeable here around this Mount Panorama track, up into the cutting turn number four as they pass the tennis court on the outside. And now for Daniel Thompson, it's a defensive game against Kuratov, and now just think about your race, and you can see just how close they get. Yeah, Kuratov taking a whole bunch of curb as he heads his way up the hill, up towards Solomon Park right now, trying to chase down Daniel Thompson directly ahead of him like a carrot on a stick. Through McPhillamy Park, Thompson gets a sly, goes up onto the curb, into the dirt as well, and Kuratov will make it side by side, then down through Skyline, not able to get the pass done just yet, but he does manage to, and that's a precision gain there from Kuratov due to Daniel Thompson's mistake. Oh, and how Bobby Zelensky will not be happy that Daniel Thompson's Save the car. Let's get a replay of that up on screen. Just had a bit of a wiggle. Did Thompson heading himself into that left hander? You can see he loses it on entry, tries to correct it out onto the curb and the gravel. I've seen many a car, including myself, I've had crashes there as well in my uh, very unillustrious iRacing career. But Connery, Daniel Thompson, he's done well to save that, especially in a truck, does not have much turning. Yeah, exactly. You can just see it on the screen. Car just gets away from him. Has to take to the gravel and the grass. I have no, I haven't seen very many people at all save that kind of slide up through McPhillamy Park. Do you, that's just one of the settings on this racetrack for absolutely massive instance. But Daniel Thompson has got away with one. And Zelensky, if someone's relayed that information to his ear now, he won't be happy. He probably wanted Thompson to just have a heavy impact with the wall. Yes, but now he'll be hoping that Martin Kapal gets into contact with Wade Hayes. This is the battle for fourth, fifth and sixth because James King has not broken away. 1.1 seconds currently the gap between him and Wade Hayes at the moment. So the 383 and the 64 trucks you can see a little bit of a serpentine here. Just trying to get in the draft. Something that you normally see at Indianapolis Motor Speedway in the Indy cars. Maybe a little bit up the mountain, Connery, but for the moment at least, now you start thinking strategy. Do I dare pit early? Yeah, exactly. One scheduled stop in this series. Do you decide to dive down on towards the lane, get yourself a little bit of clear track, a little bit of clear air to work with? Of course, the aerodynamic effects on these tracks, on these trucks are minimal at best, but you can still find yourself a clear piece of track, so you don't have to be worried about any cars ahead or behind you. And uh, that, for some drivers, is a big advantage when you don't have anyone around to pressure. But uh, having a look at these guys as they head through McPhillamy Park, then down towards Skyline as well, uh, there also might be an issue if some of these drivers have had some contact with the wall, and I know James King has because his front, uh, sort of his front right bumper has just been messed up a little bit. Maybe paying early might be an advantage if you can get like those few seconds of fresh repair. Yeah, off of the red. Or just actual repair. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right, Connery. Bobby Zelensky is off of pit road. He has made his one and only stop. I know that the series uh, official, or the marshal, shall we say, Nash Hendry, is having a bit of a conversation with Zelensky at this point in time. So just keep an eye on that, see if anything develops. But for Kapal and Co, it's a case of chase on the brakes into the left-hander of that chase. They have been very well behaved into this corner. It's such a difficult off camber right, first opening left hander which leads into the next right you have to be absolutely on it at this track and these drivers have been i've seen not many mistakes in comes martin kapal though he attacks the pit entry then trying to get as much as he can hitting the yellow cone yeah he was the filling in the middle of that trio so i don't exactly blame him for coming down on towards the lane and getting himself a better clear track to work with of course these guys do have to take tires in their pit stops as well as per the regulations kapal pretty slow getting into his pit box though that's a bit of time lost getting himself stopped so his crew can actually service him right side guys will go on left side tires will also have to go on as well danny solo also down on towards the lane as well so two visitors towards lane make that three visitors as cockle comes in as well yep martin kapal out and away and we'll have a lot of clean air to work with then in this event and he will know that he is in that scrap between Hayes and King and if they start going together at it right now that's going to be really helpful for the future so Wade Hayes and James King keep an eye on this up the hill it seems that up the hill it's all James King everywhere else especially on the straight it seems that Wade Hayes has the advantage where Kiva Kinetic did very well in the international major split as well so they have supercar knowledge which could be helping them with their super truck knowledge here connery when it comes to mount panorama 
Exactly. Even though there are no wings to adjust on these uh, tracks, you can still play around with the weight, with the uh, rake, excuse me, uh, to get yourself a little bit more straight line speed coming down these straights. And the rake is basically how much of the car that you're presenting to the air as you're coming uh, as you're coming down these straights. And if you have more rake, then that's going to mean you have a little bit more downforce and a little bit of a deficit in a straight line. But if you lower that rear end, you can go much much faster in a straight line. Yeah, you certainly can. And just keeping an eye out on some other battles in the field, Aaron Smith is starting to chase down Mogren and Kamets. He's got a great second half of the stint uh, truck at the moment. And now in comes Sven Kamets, who is now an outside shot to try and take the championship. And he's 20 points plus on a certain Marco Mogren. So if Mogren drops and falls, well, Kamets can't get the miracle on Bobby Zelensky, but he could steal second in the championship. Clifton Cockrell, though, is back on pit road. Has he had an incident somewhere out on track? Keep an eye out on Ooh. this. And, oh, Connor, you've just had an eye on that. I think he should have stayed in pit road, and he's been yeah. there for an incredibly long time. Yeah, he's just stayed there. He's already taking tyres, maybe just deciding to get a bit of damage repaired here. He does have a little bit to the rear end, a little bit to the front end as well. And uh, it would be very interesting to see how far he drops back. He is actually still in the car, so it doesn't look like he's going to retire from this event, which is what Robin Zelensky would desperately, desperately want. But we've got a couple more cars coming off of pit lane right now. Martin Kapow has actually made his early stop work. He comes out ahead of uh, Wade Hayes. He's got the jump, but now he's got older tyres, which will come back into play in the second half of this event. This will promote... Bobby Zelensky up into 12th position. It's not enough. He needs 11th at this stage just to get the championship. If our calculations are correct, Connery, I believe you said it was one point to Marco Mogren's favour in 11th. Yeah, it would be. So that is a, what, what a way to potentially win or lose a championship just by a single point. It has happened before in iRacing, of course, in the VRS uh, iRacing GT World Championship. Can it happen again? Here in the V8 Super Truck Series, we've got about eight and a half laps to try to find out. Eight and a half laps, which is about another 20 or 16 odd minutes worth of racing. Aaron Smith, the second though, could be an unwanted visitor for Marco Mogren if they are not careful. And that's what's going to be telling us. Justin Krutov, I see, incredibly slow in the middle of the mountain. He's gone for a bit of a whoopsie daisy. Big slide, rear and front, tanging the wall. Goes around for the 360, gets it back together. How much damage now does Justin Kurutov have? Uh, well, that is going to be a huge, huge issue as I have a little bit of a look at his car right now. Just having a look, it's... Uh... Uh, it's not as heavy as an impact as uh, Bobby Zelensky has, so I think he might just be okay, uh, depending on whether he actually has a meatball flag for any suspension damage or not. But I think Kruitov might have just gone the way with the one. Daniel Thompson comes onto pit road, and he was very, very lucky, I thought, with that pit entry. You can get an unsafe pit entry if you are not careful enough, and I think he just about kept it on the island. Next question, will Justin Kruitov come down in and make another stop. He was on his outlap as he gets a whole load of grass, but it seems that the vehicle is okay enough to continue on a drive at the moment. We keep an eye out on everything. Still, your top three, Clampett, Mogren and Smith are yet to come down in and make their stop. Out and away comes Daniel Thompson. He will come out behind Wade Hayes, but crucially ahead of Justin Kruitov. And Kruitov would have definitely have been clear had he had not made that mistake, Connor. Yeah, exactly. So it looked like the early stops for a lot of drivers did work out, but unfortunately it didn't for Kurutov as a result of that incident on the top of the mountain. But now, just having a look at things, things have spread out in terms of the battles out that you have out there on track. Marco Mogren still in a championship winning P number two as it stands. Bobby Zelensky, uh, P number 12. And he just needs some divine intervention at this point, does Zelensky, if he's going to take this championship. Two vehicles need to crash out of this event or fall behind Bobby Zelensky, who currently is about to go one lap down to your race leader. And it's Clamp Nation number 44, Logan Clampett. So for the time being, at least, Going one lap down will make his life a little bit more difficult if there are to be incidents later on in this event because he will have to gain that lap 
back on other drivers. So in terms of some drivers who have had some really good runs here today, Eric Blix is one of them yet to come down in, I don't think, and serve his stop. He has done himself some good at times. In fact, he comes down in right now. So in comes Eric Blix looking to make his one stop. He was up to fifth position. We'll see where he comes out in comparison, Connor. Exactly, comes down and gets himself stopped in his box, respecting around about 14 seconds on the lane for Mark Ren. Same with Eric Blixit as he heads his way down on towards the lane. Sven, Sven Kamitz will just go through. Aaron Smith drops off the jacks and gets himself back out there on track in a decent amount of clear air as well. He comes out ahead of James King et al. But where will Eric Blixit come out? That is going to be an issue for him as well. Daniel Thompson just coming out of the final corner right now. Blixit still on the lane. I think Thompson might just get this one. You see him pass on the way down towards turn number one. Same with Kruitov as well. So that will mean Blixit will come out behind Kruitov as long as he doesn't hit the wall on the exit of pit lane. He'll get himself safely back onto the track. Well, Blixed back out on track and trying to work himself back a couple of positions. So only two drivers yet to come down and make that stop. Kalampit and also Marco Mogren as Bobby Zelensky falls one lap down thanks to Logan Kalampit. Zelensky has gained three seconds a lap, though, on his lap time. So they are still, though, 2.13s, which are a good seven seconds a lap slower than what you would see from everybody else so far in this event. We are on lap 11 out of 17 as Paul Smith comes down in to make a stop. Keep an eye on Clamp Nation then as he will look to try and make his way onto pit road very soon. He decides to stay out one lap longer. Will Marco Mogren look to stay out one lap longer or try and force Clamp it into a long-term mistake to make his life a little bit easier? Marco Mogren, championship winner if things stay like this, is now on the lane here, Connor. Yeah, exactly. Just has to negotiate the pit. Very, very tricky pit entry here at Mount Parama, but he gets that one done. And now it's just a simple case of getting yourself stopped in your box, don't overshoot, and then get yourself back out there on track once your pit crew are done with their service. But a couple of the early stoppers here could potentially uh, spell a little bit of trouble for Mogren. We did have uh, a car come down pretty early. That was Van Kamitz coming down about three laps ago, and he's been gaining quite a bit of time over your race leaders. So that is definitely one to watch. Sven Kamis down in towards turn number one, drops Mogren back into P number three. And now I have to do all my calculations again. <laughs> yes, and that will be four points dropped then from Marco Mogren. But not only that, he's got to chase back up to Sven Kamitz. And I wonder here if Kamitz will play the multi-21 role just to make sure that Radicals get this championship sorted. Aaron Smith is still there in the wings as well. So this is not ideal. But you've got to remember, Marco mogren has got the fresh rubber. He'll be able to chase down Sven Kamets quicker than Kamets is going to be able to run away at this stage. Still got the battle. Blix, Kurutov and Thompson going on here, Connery. Eighth, ninth and tenth as things stand. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, well, if these guys finish where they are right now with Mogren in P at number three and Zelensky in P number 12, Mogren will still take the championship. So there's actually no need for the team orders to be deployed right at this moment in time unless Zelensky gains himself one more position. And looking at Thompson, he's really struggling. He runs wide up through the cutting. And here comes Kurutov looking to the outside at Griffin's Mount. You don't make overtakes here. Lauren Heinrich will tell you personally <laughs> what happens here at Griffin's Mount. But for the moment, Justin Kurutov trying everything Ooh. to keep himself there. Big slide again from Thompson. He does not like that vehicle. And Blixt is all over them. Yeah, exactly. And Blix, the fresh tires of this trio as they head themselves down in towards Skyline then. This isn't really a massive overtaking opportunity, so Blix will just have to wait for now as they head themselves downhill. One of the most technical sections on any racetrack that you'll see anywhere in the world is Blix. And this is the apex for one of the right-handers there, but that is not too big of an issue. He can get the power down with the fresher rear tires and get himself launched off the corner and perhaps challenge one of these guys coming down in towards the chase. First target going to be Kruitov. Logan Clampett is down on pit road and taking his stop out and away 
he will go. And that gap does not look the same as it was compared to Sven Kamets. But back to the battle. And Blix did through on Justin Kurutov. We know the damage that he had. He is slower in a straight line. And he gives the position away to Eric Blix to go and attack Daniel Thompson. To Murray's corner they go. On the brakes, left hand 90 degrees. And of course, something else that's got to be remembered, Connery. These are public roads. Yeah, exactly, and just uh, has all the interesting uh, sort of quirks that you do get with that. Not a pre-prepared racing surface, so it can be a little bit of a debris, a little bit of a lower grip coming down through those particular corners. And here comes Blix then down the straight, trying to challenge uh, Daniel Thompson as they drop, drop down the hill and then back up through, through the compression. And then Blix it looking for the inside, but not able to coming through towards the right hand. But Thompson's made the mistake. He's completely overdriven the corner. Blix it will take the chase, uh, will take the fight all the way up to the cutting and doesn't even need the help of the corner to get himself by. Yeah, that's a fantastic move there from Blix. Eric Blix just tried to force the mistake out of Thompson and Thompson bit took the bait and well there was hook line and sinker overtake for you in this race now just four laps remain the next time Logan Clampett crosses the line and it's not as big of a margin maybe a safer pit stop to look at Connery I can get you to check the times in just a moment's time but at the moment, at least, it seems that the race is cooling down in a lot of respects. There's nothing Zelensky can do. He's hoping that some of these battles run into issues, especially the Eric Blix train, which is now starting to derail. Yeah, exactly. If those guys all come together and then Zelensky gets promoted uh, into something like 10th or 9th, then that could be the lifeline that he needs to save his championship. But they're simply not close together are that trio of cars right now. And Blixit, he's just going to pull away at the front of this one because he has the fresher rubber. So there's no chance of three cars being taken out. No, oh, there isn't. 3.8 seconds at the front of the field for Sven Hamet at the moment. And he's got 2.1 seconds over Marco Mogren. And he himself is starting to pull away from Aaron Smith. 2.048 that last time by, which is a fantastic lap by his standards. I believe that is his fastest lap of the day. And will also go down, well, won't quite go down as the fastest lap. 2.044 the quickest by Logan Clampett, but certainly very quick lap by Marco Mogren. He's certainly got pace here to burn. Certainly, certainly does, but he can't be affording to take a little bit too much out of the car or a little bit too much of a track, because if there's one track that's going to punish you for any overzealous uh, sort of moves into corners, any, you know, sort of outbreaking moves coming up to the top of the mountain, then that is going to be a huge issue for Morgan. He just needs to get that car to the end now. He doesn't have any pressure from behind. Aaron Smith is a good couple of seconds further behind, so he doesn't have to worry about that. He just needs to get the car home. Yeah, it's the case of just survive at this point in time. For Bobby Zelensky, there's nothing he can do in this situation unless, and this is a big unless, he runs into Marco Mogren, and they are very, very close together on track. Bobby Zelensky is down the bottom end of the Conrad straight. At the top end is Marco Mogren and Sven Kamets. They're going to have to do some lapping here, and Bobby Zelensky, if he wants to be mean, he could be mean <laughs> as Paul Smith decides that he wants to get him... Well, Paul Smith doesn't have a choice, really. He will get lapped by both Radicals Online cars. Yeah, exactly. Staying well out of the way is our charity streamer right now. But uh, this battle, uh, well, I don't think, I'm going to be completely honest here, I don't think it's going to be a battle between Sven Kamets and Marco Mogren. The championship is just on the line right now for Mogren, and Sven Kamets does not want to ruin that for his teammates. So he'll just either let Mogren buy pretty quickly, or just, you know, just flat out just not even fight him. Yeah, you can see the difference in lap times. 2.062 from Sven Kamets dropping back just to make sure that if it's needed, they can make the change very quickly out on track. Mogren, a 2.04.8 that last time by. Difference though for Logan Clampett, 2.04.6. Fastest man over that last lap by, but gap starting to stretch out Ooh. a little. Ooh, hello. Oh, Morgan! oh my God, don't do that to us, please. Had a, such an oversteer moment coming up through towards uh, the, well, you, where, where you start to go up the mountain and that could have been a race ending self-spin if I ever, I ever saw one. 
Well, you have to remember, those tyres are getting lit up more and more. They will be uh, heating up and will be making grip less and less and less. Once you start making one small mistake here on iRacing, two or three tend to follow as he just gets himself in the tracks there of a certain Sven Kamitz. Maybe the dirty air effect played a little bit of a role there coming out of turn two. Maybe a little bit too greedy to put on the power. But if you're Kamitz and you see your teammate behind doing things like that, you'll be hoping that things like that don't happen more and more because Kamitz now pretty much ruled out of the championship picture the fact that Zelensky's still in this race in 12th position. The only lifeline that Zelensky has right now is the battle between James King and Martin Capalba has closed up over recent times. Oh, is that car off? That Paul is Paul Smith. Smith. That's not important for Zelensky, but that is unfortunate for the Racebot TV commentator. It is. Forrest Elbow has caught him out, just trying to get through the corner on the brakes, loses it on entry, trying to save it, drifting around the corner, and ultimately doesn't make any contact with anything but survived to tell, uh, to tell the tale. Two laps to go at Mount Panorama Circuit, twice up and down the mountain they will go. And Sven Kamets does see Marco Mulgren just behind. Don't do anything silly, Radicals. Now would be the worst time for something silly to happen. Don't do a PSR in the late stages of this race. Just get this pass negotiated. Sven, uh, Sven will just have to take it on the chin here. There's no point in fighting your teammate who is in the race for the championship. You, at this stage, are not in the race for the championship with how close Mogren is behind. Pushes wide coming up through Griffin's bend. And Marco Mogren in an even more secure championship winning position now. Now Bobby Zelensky to lap is the next bit they have to negotiate then up Ooh. the mountain. <laughs> they will go worst place to catch lap traffic. We'll keep an eye on this then as Marco Mogren just going to be very conservative here. The more conservative they'll be though, they'll allow Aaron Smith back into play. That's the last thing that they'll be wanting to do as they head through Solomon Park. Bobby Zelensky, as gracious as he is, moves over to the inside, allows both of them to go through. And that is the mark of a good champion. He may not have that championship for, uh, well, he may have that championship for a lap and a half, Connery. But if things stay like this, no more after that. Yeah, simply no more chances, at least I think so, in this final uh, lap and a half that they will have to negotiate here. Aaron Smith will make his way through on Bobby Zelensky coming out of the forest elbow then. I'm still very interested in how this battle between Kapal and King is gonna turn out and King pushes wide through the forest elbow and Kapal will make it a drag race all the way down the back straight. Well, he's got the overspeed down the hill and of course he gets a big advantage from that as he carries that momentum and pretty much back into the draft you go James King trying to pick it up does fully pick it up but at the first corner in Australia Motorsports one of the best operators will come straight back down the inside looking and room being given good battling there from Martin Capal as he holds the position white flag comes out at Mount Panorama for Clark Nation, who has done the quiet race. Break away from the front, get pole position, and from there, just race your own race. And it has been a faultless race so far from Logan Clampett, the 44, rounding turn number two, and now looking to attack the mountain, the cutting coming next. Second position at the moment is Marco Mogren, one lap away from a championship which looked unlikely at the start of the racing, but my goodness, championships turn on a dime, and that was the biggest point that we have seen. Sen Kamis in third, Aaron Smith the second is in fourth position. For Bobby Zelensky, it is position number 12 for the number one, and he may just have to retire that number one at the end of this season because for eight wins, for eight pole positions, it's not to be, it seems, at this stage of the event. For Logan Clampett, he charges down the mountain one final time, hits the Big Dipper, and will just be conservative as he heads himself towards the forest elbow. In his drive, Marco Mogren will now chase down the mountain for the final time. No mistakes, Marco. You cannot afford them in the final few corners as he now makes his way through the forest elbow and onto the Conrod Strait. A sigh of relief for the final time, and just three corners remain for the 257 machine. And he knows better than anybody else 
he has had to fight hard for this championship. Harder than what a lot of drivers maybe thought that he had to here. But we're going to turn to Logan Clampett because he is going to get himself to the final corner and he will pick up a race victory at the final round of the season at Mount Panorama. Logan Clampett wins at Bathurst. But to Marco Mogren, it was Bobby Zelensky who choked on lap two, but by lap 17, the Europeans can smile because Marco Mogren is your V8 Super Trucks champion for 2018. And what a responsible and what an adult and mature drive it is from Marco Mogren. Yeah, absolutely fantastic stuff. He just needed to get that car home just as Bobby Zelensky made his mistake and got himself involved in, a cra in an altercation with the wall coming down the mountain. And uh, oh my word, that's a way to win the championship after a 42 point deficit coming into this. The Swedish driver Marco Mogren will make Rob Kuss a very, very happy man come the end of this. The last drivers have made their way then over the start finish line. And that will be Danny Solo who will be the last on the leading lap. He's had an eventful race, to say the least. Big slide to kick it off to finish off proceedings. But classified results then from Mount Panorama Circuit are as follows. Lamp Nation picks up the win. Nine and a half seconds in the end in a paint-by-numbers drive for the number 44. But it doesn't matter if you don't win the race. It's the title that counted for Marco Mogren. Second position, enough to pick up the crown as Sven Kametz finishes in third place. Aaron Smith, the second, a good drive, four to four, with Martin Kapal gaining four positions, a candidate for the Hard Charger Award in fifth. James King finishes sixth with Wade Hayes in seventh. Eric Blix, remember, he had to start this one from pit road. He went from 14th all the way to eighth come the end of this one. Another Hard Charger Award uh, person who could win it. You've got the likes of Daniel Thompson in ninth. Justin Krutov finished 10th, and Danny Solo on the second page is 11th. Bobby Zelensky throws away the chance, but I do believe Logan oh. Clampett may have had a slowdown and that has dropped him a lap. And in fact, he gets disqualified for backwards driving. So I think that may still count. Yeah. Um, so Zelensky finishes off in 12th. Paul Smith finishes 13th and Clifton Cockrell rounds out the field in 14th. All drivers managing to get themselves over to the line. We're going to step aside very briefly here on the iRacing Esports Network. When we come back, post-race coverage here from Mount Panorama Circuit and a great, great race that we've seen indeed. Averaging 0.10 gallons per lap. Did stop at 5 gallons. Change right side only. His box in 10, 9, 8, 1. Bingo. 10, 4. Adding 5 gallons. Changing right side tires.
It's the little things that matter in racing. You can take eight race victories. You can take eight pole positions. But if you can't do the little things right week in and week out, then championships will not come to you. Bobby Zelensky with arguably the biggest choke of a championship that we've seen this year falters at the final hurdle and gives the title to Marco Mogren in what was a fantastic race that we have seen here at Mount Panorama on the iRacing eSports Network. But it wasn't Marco Mogren winning the race. That one will go to Logan Clampett. Logan, let's have, con uh, let's have a conversation just for the moment because it seemed from our perspective that that was pretty much the biggest paint-by-numbers drive we've seen from you this season. Yeah, yeah. Bathurst is definitely one of my favorite tracks on the service. Of uh, usually done very good there in the GT cars and stuff. So coming here, I uh, practiced uh, a little more than I usually would, uh, and thankfully we uh, capitalized on it. Well, you managed to capitalize on a little bit of help behind from Bobby Zelensky running into his own issues, but. Once you built that gap, once you managed to satiate a four-second gap, five-second gap, six-second gap, was it just the case then of just managing every little bit of your truck to get yourself over the line and pick up a pretty important victory just to round off the season? Yeah, um, I, I tried to... Well, I saw Sven was pretty far back, so and he pit, and I tried to leave lead uh, every single lap for for Bobby to try and help him out uh, it sucks for him that uh, he wrecked it there and lost the championship uh, but I tried helping him out and then once uh, once Marco pit I pit and then thankfully we came out ahead Sven well, he came out ahead but crucially heading over to 2019 of course aspirations for the NASCAR Picanti Free Series you've got that you've got V8 Super Trucks Let's be honest here, though, Logan. Are you looking to set up to try and get two winning campaigns? <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Uh, I, I plan on trying maybe a little bit harder uh, next season for uh, this league. Well, floor is yours. Shout out sponsors. Who gets it done for you? Uh, shout out to JDR Graphics for uh, being on the hood and you guys for broadcasting, Stephen, for putting on this uh this league it's uh it's pretty fun and it actually uh i actually learn quite a bit uh on the road courses and stuff how they're laid out and all that stuff so it's pretty cool uh but uh thanks again to uh everyone watching and you guys for the broadcast once again all right it's all logan Clampett with a big race victory there and connery well you have yourself a very, very important interview. You found the champion. You have found Marco Mogren. Uh, yes, I have fantastic race for you there, Marco Mogren. And oh my word, it's a championship as well. After being 42 points behind Zelensky coming into this round, you somehow found a way to get yourself to the trophy first. How does it feel? It feels fantastic. <laughs> yes, downright fantastic. Um, the whole race, I was um, when I saw Bobby mess up in skyline and spinning around. I wasn't sure what happened, but I saw him dropping back. Um, started to think way too much ahead, which I guess a racing driver shouldn't do. Um, clipped the wall uh, and turned two the following lap and had to drive the whole race with damage. But yeah, feels awesome. And coming into this race and looking at the deficit that you had before this race and be completely honest here, did you think you, you know, had a decent chance or do you think this is kind of out of my hands at this point? I went into this race as I do with any other one. Um, I wasn't actually thinking about the championship beforehand, so you're completely right in that. It's, I just wanted a good finish to the season, um, as Bobby has been amazing the whole year. But um, yeah, <laughs> sometime later luck smiles at you. Sometimes it does, especially in racing like this. And it's also the team's championship for Radicals Online as well. And how big of a deal is that for you guys at Radicals? 
Obviously, it's very good to uh, clinch that too. It's um, awesome to be racing with Sven, and obviously Thomas helped too um, the last couple of races. So, uh, and yeah, this is a good championship. It's very fun to win it. It's been incredibly fun indeed, and uh, looking towards the future, looking into maybe next season of the V8 Super Trucks. Uh, you know, what are your plans for? over the couple next couple of months at least well now it's obviously a break um i'm not entirely sure when next season starts but um tonight it's just uh, feeling good about actually clinching a title yep and uh, we do hope you celebrate pretty well after that one is uh, before we let you go though uh marco is there anyone you want to thank for the championship well, obviously, a big shout out to Sven for helping me with the car, and Thomas uh, also, and the guys at Kinetic, with Wade primarily, and our sponsors, Cranfield, Joe Real Timing, Arma Center, Master Sim Race, MITF Podcast, Turn Racing, Simortal, and Six Sideways, and obviously, uh, Sucks Out Racing for bringing us this championship, and RaceBot for uh, bringing awesome broadcasts. A fantastic championship and a fantastic race as well. That was your championship winner for this season of the V8 Super Truck Series, Marco Mogren there, Jake. Uh, just a great performance, not only in this race and throughout the series as well. Well, he was Mr. Consistent throughout the championship and he knew that he had to be. The other driver, though, eight victories, eight pole positions. And ultimately, the title still eludes Bobby Zelensky. What happened at Skyline? Because it seemed that everything was set up for the world, the crowning. It had itself in black and orange, uh, nice little ribbons and tassels on the trophy. And it doesn't quite pull out for you today. Yeah, I just went through the section and I, I hit the curbing wrong and the truck bounced into the air a little bit. And um, yeah, just hooked to the left. I mean, it was it's, it didn't happen to me in practice. It was, it was quite surprising and uh, hit the wall pretty good. I was like, oh boy. And, um, you know, instinctively, I just tried to keep going. And then I got in the straightaway, and I'm like 30 miles per hour off on the straight. So I guess um, it would have been better just to, you know, stop on the side there and maybe get a caution to fix the damage. But uh, I think that was, yeah, I needed a lot of help from there. It sucks, man. It's a game, you know. It's, it is, I guess, it was, yeah, it was my mistake. But it's it just so weird that it just, just looked like that. But uh, how she goes. It's the way it sometimes goes. It, it, it will hurt this one, uh, I'm pretty sure. But how do you build back up your confidence after a championship losing mistake like that? I don't think that's an issue. I, I mean, I've had many mistakes before. I mean, I welcome mistakes. They make you better. But um, it just it's just annoying, honestly. I mean, I don't even know if I could learn from that because of just how weird of a hit to the curb it was. I mean, I've gone over that curb a million times and then... You know that time it just it just knocks the truck sideways and becomes unpredictable once it gets in the air a little bit. So I I, I don't think I'm an issue with confidence. I I was still running second and I was you know get, probably going to finish up there too as at least top five if you know I didn't wreck myself. But yeah, I mean good job to him. I know he's he's really worked he's really worked for it. The radicals guys really worked for it. And uh, and yeah, so just congrats. Well, Bobby, it's not a title, but more crucially than that, though, 2019 comes along. How hungry are you to get a championship back? Well, I definitely want to. Yeah, I mean, this, this, yeah, this, this one was felt like another one with eight wins out of the twelve races, but it, didn't, it wasn't meant to be because you, because you know, Mar Marco was just he didn't he won a couple races only, but he was like second and third the rest of the races, and that's what it takes to win championship. You got to be consistent. And, uh, and then I could definitely appreciate consistency like that in terms of next year. I mean, I, I want to run again, but I don't know if I'll actually have the time. I got some other stuff planned and, um, but I will try to race if I, you know, if I have the time available. Um, and then, and then, yeah, I guess I'll be a lot hungrier. I, uh, definitely learned a lot from this year. So, yeah. A lot learned then for Bobby Zelensky, humble in defeat, but ultimately a big, big bruise in terms of his ego as well. Quick fire interviews now, though, Connor, you found yourself with the man who finished in third place, and that is Sven Kamet.
Yeah, Sven. Well, all, most of the focus has been on your teammate for getting the championship win, but you were a big part of getting that team championship win as well. How does it feel, uh, Sven? Uh, definitely a good feeling indeed, having the team championship and I think Marco in the driver championship as well is definitely a, uh, a well-deserved result of the efforts we put in over the entire season uh, so far. Yeah, exactly. And you were a really, really big help to Marco in this race. You're ba you were basically playing rear gunner <laughs> throughout the entirety of this race, just not putting too much pressure uh, on your teammate, just allowing him to just do what he needed to do to try to take this championship. Of course, coming into this, you were theoretically in with a shot at the championship, but getting towards the halfway point in the race, uh, that simply wasn't going to happen. So was the thought process just be just making sure that your teammate gets the championship? Uh, well, I think the process for both of us was we just need to finish the race and if, if everyone drives without issues and basically we finish uh, second and third place basically. So the only thing that we could do is just make sure we finish and everything else was up to the other drivers of getting around the track safely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, just summarize your season right now, Sven, of course, uh, we were all over and done with for this season. Overall, ac across the races that we've had, uh, what's, what's your opinion of your performance? Uh, overall, I mean, I know it could be better, uh, obviously, but overall, I'd say that uh, my finishes were uh, where, we are, where I was supposed to finish, basically. And I definitely have no regrets looking back on any of the race. I mean, some of them could have been better, but uh, nonetheless, overall, in the end, I'm happy where I finished up. And going into next season, maybe looking for the championship win next time? I, well, it will depend as well. I mean, it depends on how the season starts, basically. So if we can get a good start and get some uh, wins straight away from the start on uh, uh, and not like this season only getting getting there at the second half of the season, I think we should have a good shot for uh, for Bolton off to challenge well, uh, both Bobby and Logan as well this race. Uh, congratulations to him uh, for next season. Any shout outs before we move on? A uh, quick thank you to everyone from Socks Out Racing for providing an uh, excellent championship. It's definitely the, the most fun I've had on the iRacing service over the past two years. Uh, secondly, thanks you to uh, Marco, uh, my teammate, for uh, well, for helping, well, for uh, driving with me this season, as well as Thomas and both Wade and Gabe from Kinetic Racing. Well then, Jake, that was Sven Kamert's uh, fantastic stuff for Radicals Online throughout this series, taking that team championship win, taking the drivers' championship as well. Uh, couldn't have asked for a better season. Just a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, you can vote for the Hard Charger Award on the Sox Out Racing Facebook page. You can go to Facebook and make sure that you get that one done. We also have most exciting driver that we need to just sort out very, very quickly here, Connery. And of course, uh, for me, most exciting driver, in my opinion, was actually Paul Smith. In what way? In what way is that he was very entertaining to watch today? I, I don't think you can just use crashing out as a criteria to give someone the most exciting award. I, I know, I, I love Paul, but I don't think that's quite... In, uh, it's a little bit disingenuous to everyone else out there. Well, the good news is we're going to bring in Paul right now for conversation. Paul, uh, it's safe to say it wasn't the greatest racing that we've seen from you, but of course, you've been on a very big uh, charity live stream, which you're still on right now. And of course, uh, a lot of hard work and efforts gone into racing here today. Uh, was it just a case of maybe a few too many races to begin with? Um, I don't know. I, um, I think it was a case of, I've not just been racing, I've been playing other games as well. But um, no, I think it was a case of uh, Bathurst just... Being Bathurst, you know, it bites, and when you make a mistake here, there's there's on the walls to meet you. So definitely, um, it it was a um, unfortunate thing to happen. I was able to get the car back, fixed it. I was down a um, a few miles an hour. Uh, I could barely make it into top gear going up into turn two. And then on the last lap, coming out of Forest Elbow, the engine blew. So I managed to freewheel it all the way to the end of the race there. So two laps down. Um, it doesn't matter, though, because the important thing is I'm raising money for Extra Life. And uh, we're currently at $705, and my goal is uh, $1,000 for, for the end of the 24 hours. So um, if anybody wants to drop by and say hello, they can do. I'm streaming on YouTube. And... Uh, 
we're going to have some more shenanigans and a bit more fun. In, in terms of extra life, then just talk just talk to us a little bit more about what it is uh, in terms of charity that you are supporting and what they look to do moving forward. Uh, so basically, Extra Life is a, a grassroots experience that mobilises passionate gamers of all types to help the Children's Miracle Network of hospitals that treat sick and injured kids in their communities. And Extra Life has raised money year-round, culminating in massive international day of play, fall ultimately, uh, each fall, should I say, so that's every uh, autumn, uh, and ultimately celebrating one grand total together. And... Um, over the years, the, over the 10 years they've done it, they've raised over $40 million in total. Last year alone, $11.1 million was raised. So it's all about raising money to help um, provide equipment, uh, provide toys, games, ways of keeping sick and ill kids uh, entertained. And it also helps families pay for vital uh, life-changing, life-saving uh, health care that maybe some families couldn't afford. I'm going to hand the floor over to uh, our Racebot TV boss, shall we say, Will Vincent. Will, I know you uh, have a very uh, important uh, bit of talking that you need to do. I don't know quite how to phrase this properly to add you in, but I know that you have been very fond and passionate about what Paul's been doing. Well, first thing is, um, I think Hugo is going to shout at me later on because I think he's the boss rather than me. <laughs> he does all the hard work. I just do all the talking more than anything else. Um, but um, first thing of all, Paul, um, I mean, you've done an incredible job so far. I mean, I remember four years ago we did the first ever 24-hour broadcast on Racebot TV, and I know exactly how hard it is. Um, so you're doing a fantastic job raising some really, not only money, and I, actually that's one thing I want to say. It's not... Not just money. One second. Up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I've got a timer. I've got a cake in the oven that's about to be finished baking. Oh, um, oh, send it my way, please. I need all the help. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not just the money that's being raised, because not everyone who is watching the streams here today can necessarily afford to donate today. However, raising the awareness is a really important thing, and that's something that I've always been an avid fan of. Um, so, Paul, first, we're doing a great job, um, and I'm going to say two things. First of all, every hundred dollars over a thousand, I will donate another ten dollars. I'm saying it here, I'm saying it now because it's going to come for your stream. So I'm going to have to hold myself to it. But also, next year, I'm going to make sure that we do this as part of Race Spot as well. Because at the end of the day, if we are going to be esports broadcasters, if we are going to be streamers, and we are going to be a part of this network of community, I think it's important that we recognize the good that streaming, the good that esports, the good that actually having a face sat there busting their ass for 24 hours can be. And I also say, Paul, at least you're wearing the Sim Racing Expo t shirt. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll see you next year. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I hope so as well. Thank you so much, Will, for the, the, the kind words and the offers of uh, matching. Donate, well, not matching, but uh, adding on top of donations as well. I'm nearly threw you under the bus there, Will. And, uh, hey, I'll tell you one thing. At least I made up now for having to share a room with you in Germany. <laughs> by the way, I've just remind, I've just been reminded by one of my guys on chat of one thing that I have actually said on the, on, on the stream, which is I regret sharing a room with Will Vincent. <laughs> Let's be honest. Let, I would regret sharing a room with you as well. Wow. But it well, wasn't our... It was an odd doing. <laughs> well, yeah, no, let's, of let's, let's, blame, let's blame Dom. It's his fault. Yes. Dom Duhan. <laughs> yeah, Dom, you owe us money. <laughs> well, there we see Paul Smith and Will Vincent having some great time. But, Connery, um, we didn't quite make it clear, but you had a very specific pick for your most entertaining driver. Yeah, the driver that was in good couple of battles here today on the mountain, and that's going to be the driver of the number 89, Eric Blixit. is going to get my vote for the uh, most exciting driver award. And with that, the curtain falls on the V8 Super Truck season, a fantastic amount of work that has gone into the boys at the back, the likes of Stephen Burbish, Nash Hendry, and Christian Schalner as well. Big thank you to everyone at Socks Out Racing, as well as everyone that gets it done here on the iRacing Esports Network, and of course for us at Racebot TV and Wern Designs, the official graphics partners here at Racebot TV with ATVO and Engineer, the official graphics engine. 
Our lifetime in scoring was brought to you by Nick Thyssen, as well as the animations from Simon Grossman. And of course, Istvan Balo's Track Cams 22. Make sure you check them out for some great camera footage that we've seen throughout this event. 2019 will come back for Socks Out Racing in the V8 Super Trucks, but my goodness, what a title we've had. It seemed all written in the stars for Bobby Zelensky, but Bathurst, it bites back. Marco Mogren is your 2018 champion, and from Hugo Louise, Connery Malik, and Jake Sperry, as well as Will Vincent, you've heard, and also Paul Smith, I'd like to thank you all for watching here on the iRacing Sports Network. We'll talk to you in a bit.